In this video, we're going to look at many ways you can use markers in your Camtasia 9 editing workflow to enhance your productivity. First, we'll go through the mechanics of how to add the markers and work with them, and then check out many usage examples. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great video, become a ninja at video editing and learn more on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then hit that subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so that you don't miss a thing. To get started with markers, let's look at the mechanics of applying markers to your project. The simplest way is to be in the context of your timeline here and then just click on Shift M and as you can see, there's a marker here that gets added to the timeline. Do you can see that it's actually sitting on a track just be behind the blue and the white flag that you see here. Likewise on clips down below, you can see there's another track and, and when I mouse over, you see that a plus sign appears, which is also another opportunity to create a marker. And you can just do that and just click and add markers that way. If you want to name your marker, you can see based on the properties pane that's up here in the right corner, the, the marker name is right here and we can just name it and call it whatever test one, test one for our example here. And as you can see, there's the name. You can always rename it at any time. Click on the rename in the right mouse button and then it automatically highlights the text and you can just rename it anything you want. So we're just playing right now, putting names in. Now the marker exists here on the timeline, but it can also be moved down to the clip directly below or anywhere along this line by just clicking the same position on the line where the plus sign appears on the track. So if you see, I clicked there and it actually kept the name and just moved the marker down. The marker can also be moved around wherever it's located. So here it is on a clip, move it around by just clicking and dragging right or left. If I move it back to the timeline track, it can you can do the same there. Why would you have a clip with the marker on the timeline? Well, what you're going to see is that with individual clips like this one here, as I move it, the actual marker is attached to the clip and it moves alongside with it. But when I put a marker on the timeline, it's permanent. It's etched to there right at that point in time. So you're actually going to want to, you know, use them for different purposes. I use, uh, I'm going to delete this one here. So you can do right mouse button delete to get rid of a marker. That's one option and I'll undo it. And another option would be to just, you know, select the marker and press the delete key. There's a few quick ways of deleting the marker. Now you can see just to the left of the timeline, the word marker here. If I click on that diamond, you can see control M or clicking on the marker will uh, toggle the marker line on, on and off. So as you can see, when it goes hidden, when we turn it off, you still see these little blue triangles, which means that the markers are all there. They are simple to light up again. You just click on that. And even if the track is kind of hidden, you can still navigate to, to the markers. So for example, one of the, the neat things that you can do is using the control key plus the right square bracket, and that will take you to, to the next marker. So as you can see, the markers down here, and then if I do the, the, the same keystroke combination again, control right bracket, I go to the next marker. Likewise, I can do control um, left square bracket and I can move to the previous marker. So that, that can be very useful to help you bounce around your track while you're editing, depending on what you're doing. So let's just make things visible again. And another great way I use that is to actually do selections. So if I wanna go back to the previous marker and let's say I wanted to select an area, I'll go control uh, left square bracket. And then if I do control shift and right square bracket, it'll select for me everything from the current point of the playhead out to the next marker. And if I click that same keystroke again, control shift right, right square bracket, it just keeps going, it expands the select. And if I want to expand the select the other way, I can go and continue to expand the width going the opposite direction. So control shift left square bracket. So as you can see, it's very powerful. And this is like a nice way if you don't want to constantly use the, you know, the, the control handles to do the select, you could actually drop a few markers on your timeline 
few other tips for markers. So let's delete these few extras here that we don't want. On the timeline now, if I want to, you see I did a right mouse click, I can hide the marker track from here as well, which just brings me back to the triangles. And then we'll make it display again. But I can also do right mouse button, remove all the markers that are just on the timeline. So if you'll see here, we have these few markers, they disappear. Control Z brings them back. But another way of getting rid of the markers is to go under the modify and you see markers, we can actually remove all the markers. That means everything everywhere, not just the timeline. Boom, it all disappeared. Control Z to bring everything back. We're good. And under modify markers, you can see we can add the timeline marker here as well. So we talked about the shift M. If I click there, the markers just added now right here at the playhead. Now let's look more closely at how I actually apply the use of markers to my workflow process for editing. So in the start of this video, as you can see, I already have a marker right here that says music lower volume. So as you can see on this track here, I have a music track and the volume is down to 19%. So I originally placed that marker there to help me out to manage setting the volume. So I'm just going to delete a few of these as we go along. My next marker here said add mirror image. Well, I was making a discussion point and then I brought in a few text callouts, but I needed to add a special PNG image I had to go research for. So I made a marker for me to go look for that after, and there's the image. So there I put that on the, the, at the timeline level. Now, remember our little trick to, to go to the next marker, which is control plus the right square bracket, do that. And you can see now I have, um, a bunch of these markers for on on the different clips talking about fading as you can see on the bottom track here which is actually on the lowest one here the image i actually have a little fade in that but the others because there's behaviors on them the other text callouts i didn't want to fade in the same way because it was all managed inside the behavior so that was all done so i just made a note of that of course this is overkill this was just for demonstration purposes that i show fade in here and then no fade for the others you know, I, I would know just by having the, the reminder of the one, and then I wouldn't need ha to have all of these extra ones. There was the 15 second timeline one that I talked about earlier. I'm gonna go just as a reminder, I'm gonna go right mouse button to move along. Now I have another reminder on my music track. So I'm getting towards going into a different section of the video, which has a whole music theme playing in the background. So as I fade out the voice, I wanted to increase the volume, so that's what this reminder was for. And we can remove that now. And I wanted to add some behaviors here to these text callouts. So I had a clip level reminder because again, remember if I move the clip, the the uh, the marker stays with it. So that was to remind me to add a behavior or a special effect. And then there's my 30 second marker. And there we go. The last one was to do a final music fade. So as you can see in this example, I used markers several times. It was quite useful just to give me reminders and telling me things to do. And I often put those things together while I'm 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 initially just laying down the tracks as part of the, the basic process of putting my content down. I'll often, while things come into my head, I will put put notes along the timeline along and the clips to to give me reminders of what to do next. Now we're going to take a dive into a second project example where I show you how I'm using markers to help me with the editing process. As you can see, this is a pretty involved and busy one. One of the great things I use to help me with navigating around to be able to see things in detail is I use the control key plus the scroll, uh, scroll wheel. And if I scroll up, control plus the scroll up key, we're now in much greater detail. And also if I, if I do the opposite control and uh, scroll mouse wheel down, it's again, zoom out like we started. Okay. So here we are at the start at a level of zoom that we can now nicely read the markers. And I just wanted to mention another technique I use to help me scroll along the timeline is using the shift key plus now the scroll up or down. So if, you, if I have the shift key, 
and I scroll up, it goes left. If I go scroll down while pressing the shift key, it scrolls to the right, which is, makes it very convenient to, to scan through your timeline a bit at a time. But because we want to do this in a rapid fire fashion, I'm going to use the control right bracket to help us zoom through all the cool samples of uses of markers in, in this project. So here we go. Here's the first one. So as you can see, I have a timeline one that says special effects one behavior. So I have all of these nice animations here in the beginning, and I had to establish what kind of behaviors I was going to use. So that was a reminder for me to, to manage what kind of behavior or animation effects I was going to put in there. Then a reminder here that I had to insert my brand intro after I spoke, which is done. Then the next use which is something that's a recurring theme, you're going to see this is my transition. So this particular video had three tips. So I have to put this similar construct to transition into the tip each time. So you're going to see that repeated again, another timeline note for me to remember to put in those details there. And as we move forward, so here was a call out, um, you know, th where there were many of these throughout the video where I wanted to add some a text annotation. So I used those throughout the process. Next one here, special effect animation. I wanted to, in this case, you're going to see I zoomed in plus then I drew a box and had an arrow. So there's, there's actually two clip level uh, markers here. One's SFX3 and one Dropbox and arrow. So that covers those. Next, I used, this is a great use for it as well. I'm going to edit the, show the edit audio here. As you can see, I, as, as you go through, if you had some breaths or audio editing that you needed to do, I just, as I was scanning through, just put a marker so I knew I had to come back to fix that, which I've already done. And as we continue, likewise for um, the audio, there's also points where there's transitions. In this case, I stitched together a few tracks and I had to, had to clean the, uh, the audio in the transition. So I used a marker to remind me to go do that after. Here's the next transition in my, going into my uh, tip number two. So I had to add that element in. And a reminder for me to put in my remember to subscribe. That should be in here a few times in the video at strategic timing points. That's why that was a timeline attribute. And then now, if you notice, just to be mindful that in, because this was screencast recorded, there's my audio and here's my video clip. I had a reminder on the video portion of the clip to add in the animation. And as you can see, with, based on the label here, it's, it's hard to read. So if you come, if we click it on context, now read it, it says SFX, SFX4 animation zoom in. So you can see here, I did a zoom in and I did a draw box and, and that's kind of covered right there. We go to our next and I have again, a restore animation. So this time I had to put it to bring it back to the way the video was functioning. We have clip speed. So you're going to see there's, there, there's all kinds of clips inside the video where I, I tried to speed things up for efficiency of viewing. And I, there's, there's again, because this was screencast, there's both the video track and the audio portion. So both of them got little clip level marker reminders. Whoops, I added an extra one by mistake there to edit the clip speed. So, and then lastly, a reminder to put in my, my outro details, which is something I add in from the library. I've used markers in many places throughout the video. By using markers, I know as I went along that I had to do work in different places. Wow, using markers in Camtasia 9 video editing has so many possible applications. You can really get as creative as you want. So be sure that you apply some of the ideas you learned in this video and establish some great time-saving video editing workflow habits. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, be sure to hit the subscribe icon on this page so that you can get more videos like this in the future. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.